so of course they were motivated by the fact that they already had this piece of the puzzle. Uh, in the shipping product that's on OTN, there was no support for this kind of UI shell out of the box. And so some people said, oh, task flows, they seem like extra work, I'm not going to use them. But once you uh, get the next release of JDeveloper and ADF, it will be very simple to set up, uh, use a dynamic shell template that we provide, and then to enable the, uh, the behavior of that template of opening a new window and opening a new task flow in a tab or closing it, uh, we have a, a, a bean that we provide with some methods that can be called from EL so that at runtime, your uh, global tabs, you can have one or more of those, and then inside a given tab, you can open up one or more task flows that can allow users to be working on different, even multiple instances of the same task flow. Edit employee King, oops, get a phone call, have to go edit employee Smith. You could be doing two of the same task flow uh, happening in two separate tabs. Um, so I wanted to show a quick demonstration of what that would look like. Um, UI shell demo. Ah, this timer is still going off every 10 seconds. Close that window as soon as this guy starts up. So this is uh, the simple UI shell. It's got a number of facets and parameters we can change. Of course, you don't have to have a say Oracle navigation shell. Um, you can start activities uh, that appear. You can have either links or even buttons in the same in one tab. Open up uh, task flows in a third activity. The user can you know, flip between the, the tabs and work on whatever this task flow lets them do or whatever this task flow lets them do. Uh, there's like a little close button uh, that allows them to close the current tab. And in the next uh, example here, I'll show the support it has for... So here we're going to open up a tab using a menu, just a different idea. Maybe your UI, you'd like to open task. But in this case, I can open the same thing multiple times. So the new activity, let's say this was something that was... Uh, Here's a new activity once, twice, three times. Here, if I click on button number two, it will dirty the tab. So there's a little property it keeps track of to know if any work's been done in that task flow. And if I try to close a dirty tab, it's got some support in there that will, of course, you can change the wording. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the, the template. Uh, yes, let's close it anyway. And so, uh, a, just like a few small things that were needed, but without it, it's like quite complicated to imagine you need it and think of exactly how to, how to uh, implement it. So that should provide quite a bit of uh, good head start for motivation on using the, the bounded task flows that show up as the content of these tabs. Okay, so next we'll talk a little bit about a feature that's new in the release that came out over the summer called uh, Smart Filters on the LOV Combo Box. Oracle applications changed to using this as practically their only LOV component uh, after we added a few features that they wanted, which was that this special list, it looks like a drop-down. And when you click on it, it does show a set of choices. But they wanted the ability to have that list be filtered to only have the most probable choices the user might pick. And of course, that's a very subjective uh, <laughs> thing. So, we had to be able to make it possible to provide a view criteria that could filter what you mean for the most probable <laughs> choices. So imagine this was like a currency. And maybe you pop down and you know by querying some tables that the uh, most common currencies in this particular installation are US dollars and Euro and Japanese yen. So only those three currencies out of hundreds can show up there. If you click on the search link, a normal LOV will pop up and let you find all the choices. And from a performance aspect, this component is interesting because it does no query when the page is rendered. It will only do an initial query when you click on the button to bring up this list. So if they never click on the list, you don't do the query for that. 
And then a more complicated query might happen if they bring up the LOV and search the whole thing. So <coughs> let me show you uh, where in the UI that's set up. There's a new little field called filter combo box using. And you can pick one of your view criteria from the, the VO that's driving the list. Is there a concept of enumerated list? Oh? Enumerated list, valid list, valid, valid list. Let's see how this stuff does my point is done. I mean, if you can get it to appear as the result of a view object, it will work. But it could be a programmatic view object, it could be a static view object that has those that data in it. So as long as it looks, smells like a view object to <laughs> the LOD, it will work just like any other query. So let me show you a quick demo of that smart filter LOD. Um, what did I call that? Smart LOD. So this is uh, this is actually the example from the Oracle Magazine article that just came out this, uh, yesterday. That I, so you can read about how to build this in my latest uh, column in Oracle Magazine. So here you can see, well actually my pound signs are in there now, hopefully it will still work. Um, if I type something like uh, res and tab out, I can use like auto completion like a normal LOV. If I click on the down button, my two choices that my filter has identified as being the smart choices are in the list, so I could pick operation. Or I can click on search and the whole LOV will come up. Let me find something like sales and Okay, so that's just a quick example of the smart LOV. So a couple of anti-patterns to look out for. I noticed in some of the Oracle application schemes, they thought they were inventing some clever uh, way to get reference data to display. Rather than um, including the, the reference department entity, for example, in your employee's view object to show the depth, the D name, and base a list of values on that, um, uh, they instead figured out that if they defined a transient attribute for DNAME, that's a little bit like an Oracle Forms way of doing things, define a transient attribute, and then create a view accessor that queries the other table with a parameter based on the, uh, the depth number, then they can use the second query and look up that DNAME instead of being part of a single join. So if they query a table full of 20 rows, they've done 21 queries one to fill the table and 21 row queries to get the, the reference information. So that's, that wasn't a very smart idea. We, I got them back on the right track for that one. Um, <laughs> another one that took me by surprise was someone had used a select one choice LOV that actually in their case had like a thousand choices, available choices in it. And they found that if they marked it as read only, then it would render as a simple label. So they queried a thousand rows in the drop down and then it showed you know, the appropriate department name based on the value, and then it rendered like a label, so it just looked like a nice lookup feature, but it was querying a thousand rows on every, every single time the form would render, so that's another uh, anti-pattern. Okay, so I'll talk about, in the last few minutes, a few uh, miscellaneous uh, best practices. One is that when you create a view criteria, uh, there's a feature that maybe you've not used called selectively required, where you can mark certain attributes, certain view criteria items as being selectively required. And what that means is at least one of those items needs to be filled in by the user or we won't run the query. Typically, you mark the columns that you know have indexes on them. So at least one index field is part of the query. Otherwise, the app will refuse to execute, telling the user, like, you know, come on, work with me. I need you to enter at least one of these selectively required fields. So, that's a, a feature to be aware of that can make a big difference on performance since it won't allow your users to do queries that 
performance will be terrible.